Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew Clark, and in today's video, I wanna talk about ninth chords. Now, here on this channel, we've talked a lot about something called the chord roadmaps, and basically all these are, are two different patterns that you can use to play all the chords in any key, and then you would just shift them up or down the fretboard, whichever of the roadmaps fits better, uh, to be able to play all of those chords, so all seven chords that naturally exist inside of the key. And these are just major and minor chords, very basic chords. Now, something I have touched on before in my video about where do chords actually come from is seventh chords and seventh chord shapes and all of those ones that also exist diatonically. So every single major or minor chord inside of a key also has a corresponding major seven, minor seven, or dominant seven chord that fits with it and all those notes fit very nicely inside the key. Well, what I'm gonna be doing here is taking that one step further and we're gonna be getting into ninth chords. And the really cool thing about this is once you know all of these new shapes is you're just gonna kind of be able to drag and drop them into your existing chord roadmaps because you're gonna know, well, a four chord is always going to be a major chord. Well, you're also gonna know it can always be a major nine chord. And so you can just drop that in there when you want some of that sound. Now these ninth chords do have much more of a jazzy feel. So if you can imagine our regular major and minor chords, they're gonna feel very neutral, really easy to create melodies over, and they're great for pretty much every genre of music. Seven chords, and then eventually nine chords, they fit really well in like neo soul, R&B music, uh, and blues music, and things like that. So the key here is just to learn to use them sparingly. You're not gonna play an entire chord progression necessarily all full of ninth chords, but you now are gonna have access to where you can slot those in whenever you want to. Now, before we get too deep into this lesson, I will have all of these chord charts as well as a chord cheat sheet available over on my Patreon and to YouTube channel members. That'll be a downloadable PDF. So if you are interested in picking that up, you can head down below this video and at the top of the description, I'll have everything linked there. Okay, so the music theory behind this is not too complicated, but I would recommend going through my video about the essential music theory for guitar players first. So if you know your basic music theory, you're gonna be fine. But if you do need to kind of brush up on some of this stuff or some of it's a little confusing, make sure you go check out that video. Again, linked in the description below. So when we play chords inside of a key, what we like to do is we like to number those chords inside the key. And it's pretty simple. You have a major scale, so a G major scale. It's got seven notes in it before it returns back to a G. And all of those notes have a corresponding chord thanks to our major minor formula. And all this is gonna do is it's just gonna tell us that the one, four, and five chords are always major, the two, three, and six chords are always minor, and then the seventh chord is a diminished chord. Now, if you're familiar with the chord roadmaps, you're gonna know all this already. You understand how this Nashville number system actually works. And that's when people call out, uh, play the one chord in this key or play the four chord in this key. They're just referring to those numbers corresponding to the Nashville number system. Now, each of those basic chords is built on something called a triad. And those triads consist of three notes, quite obviously. And basically, a major chord is built from a major triad. So there are three notes inside of those. And then the minor chord is built from a minor triad, diminished from the diminished triad. So all this means is when you play a regular major or a minor chord, you're really only playing chords that are made up of three different notes. Now, these triads are built up of the root, the third, and the fifth. In the case of a major triad, root, major third, and perfect fifth. In a minor triad, we've got a root, a minor third, and a perfect fifth. Now, when we take those chords a step further and we add another note to them, right? So we take it from a three note chord to a four note chord, we come up with seventh chords. And these also will follow a pattern just like the major minor formula. There's also a formula for seventh chords. And so the way that that kind of works is your one chord is going to be major seven, your two chord minor seven, your three chord minor seven, your four chord major seven, then your five chord is the weird one. You would assume it would be major seven, but it has one funny note in it. So to compensate, we actually play it as a dominant seven chord. So the five chord is a dominant seven chord or just seven chord. And then our sixth chord is a minor seven chord. And then our seventh chord, because it's kind of weird and not used a whole bunch, it's going to be a minor seven flat five chord. Sounds very complicated. I will show you the shape a little bit later just so that you have it. So that formula is pretty simple. It basically just follows our major minor formula, but it gives us all those seven chords, right? The only one being that five chord is a little bit different because it's gonna be a dominant seven chord. Now, if we were to add the next note to these chords, we would end up with a nine. Now, the whole nine thing is a little bit confusing. So I'm just gonna kind of slow down here for a second and explain it. Because if you look at the notes in the way that they work, it goes one through seven and then 
you go back to one, or you could call it eight, I guess, right? Because it's called an octave. So all that a nine means when you see the nine is it's the same thing as the two. So you can imagine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight is the same as one, and then two is the same as nine, right? And it's the same thing we talk about 11s and 13s. Those are just fourths and sixths. I don't want you to think too, too hard about it right now, but the reason we use nine instead of two is basically just because if the third is in the chord, then we're gonna use nine. Whereas if we took the third out of the chord, we would call it something like a sus two chord, right? You've probably heard of a suspended two chord because there's no third in it. On top of all that, nine usually implies that it's a whole octave above the root. So it's not the one right next to the root being a two, it's all the way up. It's not always the case, but it usually is. So now when it comes to making a major nine chord, what this means is we're gonna have the root the major third and the fifth, so what makes up our major triad. Then we're also going to have that major seven in there. And then on top of that, we're also gonna have the ninth. So there are five notes happening in this chord. Now for all of these shapes, we're actually going to have to omit one note because we just don't have enough fingers to fret all the notes we need. So we're gonna remove the least important note from these chords, which is the fifth. So the fifth is that very stable power chord note. Right, that note, it's not super important to what's going on in the chord. So if we are gonna remove a note, the fifth is kind of the one we can get rid of. But technically, if we're building out the whole chord, the fifth would be included. Now, because we are skipping right over those seven chords and getting right into our ninth chords, if you do wanna learn the seventh chord shapes, because they are very, very useful as well, and actually probably a better starting point once you go beyond major and minor chords, uh, I do have a video that covers it, as I mentioned earlier. So make sure you go check that out. It's from where chords actually actually come from, uh, that's gonna explain all of the seventh chords and all of the shapes that you would need to play them as well inside of the chord roadmaps. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the actual shapes. And again, I don't wanna get too deep into the theory because that's not what's important. It's more about memorizing the shape and then the corresponding number from the key. So that's the important part. Remember, like the one chord. So in the key of G major, the one chord is the G. So you wanna remember like the formula that corresponds to that. Okay, so we're gonna use the key of G major because it's a very comfy key and it works really well with the chord roadmaps. So when you learn these shapes, it's gonna be very easy for you to then shift them around and actually use them uh, in whatever key you want to play in. Uh, but our chord roadmap here would give us G as our one, A as our two, B as our three, we go up onto the next string, get C, which is our four, D, which is our five, E, which is our six, then we go all the way up here for our seven, which is an F sharp. And if we apply our major minor formula, we would know that our one, four, and five chords are major chords, and then our two, three, and our six chords are minor, and then that last one is a diminished chord, uh, as our F sharp, we're really not gonna talk much about it today because one, is not super useful. Also, the shape that includes the nine for this is every shape that I've looked at is pretty awful and not really something that I would even ever play. So it's better off if you are gonna play that seven chord just to use a minor seven flat five shape. I will show you that uh, just so that you do have it, but I also cover it in my video about seventh chords. Now keep all of these major or minor corresponding to their numbers, the formula thing in mind as we go through these ninth chord shapes. So our first chord, which is a G major, is going to be a major nine chord. And the shape for a major nine chord, uh, if it's rooted on the low E string is going to look like this. So it's those four notes and it's only on the lowest four strings. So you do need to make sure you're either muting the B and E strings. Muting is gonna be very important for all of these shapes because none of them are full chords. Uh, which is very important most of the time. As a guitar player, you actually don't wanna play these full range chords. There's just too much going on. So uh, if you want to get really into the details of all the intervals, uh, we've got root here, major third right there. We've got our seven there, and then we've got our nine right there. You can adjust things a little bit if you do not want to bar this chord, uh, but for me, that's very uncomfortable, so I find it a lot easier to just bar, do a little mini bar with this finger. Just like that. Sounds beautiful, right? In place of. Full G chord. Sounds really nice. Then we move on to our two chords. So what would typically be an A minor uh, is just gonna be an A minor nine. So the shape for this rooted on the low E string as well is this. Just like that. 
Pretty straightforward shape. Again, not playing the B and E strings, so make sure you either leave those out by picking however you want or muting them. So muting those strings. Uh, just whatever's easiest for you. And our three chord is kind of where we get a little bit weird. So if you remember with the seventh chords, I said that five chord, it's a little weird because it's a dominant seven chord. Well, in this case, our three chord starts getting weird. And that's just because we want all of our notes to come naturally from the G major scale. And for us to play just a regular B minor nine, well, there'd be a note in there that's not from the actual scale, G major scale. So what we do instead is we play a chord called a B minor seven seven flat nine. So if it had the nine in there, we would just ignore the seven part because uh, it would just be implied. But in this case, we had to play a B minor seven flat nine. And the shape is really easy for this one. Uh, so if this is our regular minor shape here, which is not going to work because this note cannot be in there, we have to drop it. So this chord has a lot of tension but it is diatonic to the key. And then next up we go to the four chords. So we're gonna jump up onto that next string. So the four is always right above the one in any key, uh, according to the chord roadmaps. And we are just playing a regular major nine chord. So typically this would be a C major, or if it were a seven chord, it'd be a C major seven, or if it's a nine chord, it's gonna be a C major nine. Now I love this shape. I think it's really, really cool. And it just looks like this. Just like that. And with this one, we've got our root. We've got our third right there, major third. We've got our major seven. And we've got our nine on top there like that. Beautiful chord. Uh, I like this because I'll bar this maybe. It'll do a little, little hammer on there. You don't need to do that, but that's gonna be our four chords. So that is a C major nine. Then moving onwards and upwards, we move to our five chord. And if you go back to the seventh chords, this one's already weird, right? Because it's not just a major seven chord. It is a dominant seven chord. So we still, because it's still including the seven, we still have to play a dominant seven and then add the nine on top of that. So this chord is one of our weird new shapes, but the chord itself is very easy to play. And all it's called is a nine chord. So just like quite often we would call a dominant seven just a seven chord. So this would be like a D seven chord instead of a D dominant seven. This is just a D nine chord. That's all we call it. And it looks like this. A lot of tension on this chord. And this one really pulls very hard. The seven chord already pulls very hard back to the G, uh, the root. So the five chord typically wants to resolve to the one all the time when it's a seven chord, dominant seven chord, it really wants to pull back. And then with a nine chord, it really, really wants to pull its way back. Uh, so obviously you can hear how it wants to resolve there, but this is what the chord shape looks like. Just like that, pretty easy. And then we carry on to our six chord. So this would typically be a minor chord. So an E minor would be our six chord. And then we would turn this into an E minor seven very simple. And then if we wanted to turn this into a nine chord, it would just be an E minor nine. And the shape for this is actually very similar to just a nine chord uh, because it's basically the same shape. We just have to move that one finger back a little bit so that we actually get the minor third in there. I love that chord. I think that's really cool. Uh, if you're playing a chord progression that's just full of regular major or minor chords, and then you throw this in there uh, for your sixth chord, right beautiful and finally we get to that seven chord and really here all you want to do is just play that minor seven flat five shape there's already enough going on there and you're usually using this chord more as like a passing chord it's not something that you're really going to sit on too much at least in most popular music uh, but the little chord shape that i like to use for this one right there it sounds very dissonant but it does pull very nicely back to the one as well. Right, just like that. So that little shape again looks like this. Alternatively, there is also a version that we can play on the low E string, rooted on the low E as well. So if you're playing in a specific key where maybe that's more accessible than the one higher up the fretboard, uh, rooted on the A string, uh, that shape looks like this. Just like that. And again, 
resolves very nicely back to the one chord. Uh, and once again, these are not really chords that you're gonna use a whole bunch, but it's nice to just know a shape that works in that position. And again, this is not a nine chord. This is just a minor seven flat five chord. Okay, so I just wanna do a quick recap of everything we've covered so far. Uh, and specifically, I wanna talk about the formulas uh, relating to the major minor formula that we kind of start off with, uh, because that's like the most important part, right? Because then whatever key you're in, you're gonna know the one chord is this, the two chord is that. Whether you're doing a major minor chord, you're doing a seventh chord, or you're doing a ninth chord. And I am making a little cheat sheet as well. So if you're a Patreon member or you're a YouTube channel member, you'll be able to access that and download it. And that's just gonna show you like all the formulas. So it'll be like over a one chord, you're always allowed to play a major chord or a major seven chord or a major nine chord and so on and so forth with the rest of the chords inside of a key with their corresponding number. So for our major minor formula, our one chord is major, our two chord is minor, our three chord is minor, then our four chord is major and our five chord is major, our six chord is minor, and then our seven chord is gonna be that diminished chord. Now when we move on to seventh chords, we would have our one chord being a major seven, our two chord being a minor seven, our three chord being a minor seven, our four chord being a major seven, our five chord being our one weird one, being a dominant seven chord or just a seven chord, our sixth chord going back being a minor seven, and then our seventh chord is a minor seven flat five chord. Then lastly, with our ninth chords, we have our one chord being a major nine chord, our two chord being a minor nine chord, our three chord being one of our weird ones, and that's where we get our minor seven flat nine chord. Then our four chord is gonna be a major nine chord. Our five chord is just gonna be a nine chord. So it's again, a weird one. Then our six chord is just gonna be a minor nine chord. And then our seven chord, we're just gonna leave it as a minor seven flat five chord. If we followed the theory and we gave that seven chord its nine, the actual name of the chord would be a minor seven flat five flat nine chord. Obviously, there's just so much going on there. And again, I just haven't found a good shape that works well with that chord. So I would say just best off leaving it out. So your first step from here should just be to practice these shapes and get them under your fingers. I know even when I'm learning a new chord shape, I have to sit there and kind of put it on and then change and then go back and really try and get it down. And even still sometimes it'll take me a little bit longer to make these chord shapes than the other ones that I've been playing for the last 15 or 20 years. But once you do start getting one or two of those shapes down, you can start slotting them into your chord progressions based on your chord roadmaps. It's pretty cool to be able to have those options now what I want to talk about next is there are two shapes that we've kind of missed. And what I mean by this is if we were to play the other chord roadmap, so the one that's rooted on the A string, we didn't play that minor seven flat nine shape rooted on the A string, and we didn't play that nine shape, so the one based on the five chord, rooted on the low E string. So I'm just gonna show you those two shapes, just so if you're in another key where you're using that other roadmap, you still know a shape for every single chord inside that key. So let's go to the key of D major, because we would use the other roadmap if we were playing in this key, right? Because a D is all the way up here on the E, and we're not gonna play all the way up there. That just is not realistic. So instead we play the other chord roadmap, which is right here. So we get our one here, two, three, and then we go four, five, six. So in our old roadmap, we'd have our four right above our one. Well, in this one, our one is right above our five. So it can be a little confusing, but once you kind of get the hang of it, it's pretty simple and straightforward. And there are only two roadmaps that you're ever really gonna need to know. For the one, it's a major nine chord, so you already know that shape. Then our two is just a minor nine chord, so you know that shape. Just like that, so there's an E minor nine. Now for our three, that is where we get our minor seven flat nine. So we need a new shape because the one that we learned before is only rooted on the low E string. So that chord shape would look like this. Again, a lot of tension in that three chord, but all of these notes fit diatonically into the key, so everything works very nicely. Then we go to our four chord, so back down onto the low E string, and we know how this chord works because it's just a major nine chord, so just like that. So it's the same major nine shape rooted on the E string. And then we go to our five chord. This is again where we need to come up with a new shape because we only know our nine chord shape rooted on the A string. So we need to learn a nine chord shape rooted on our low E string. And this one's a little bit weird to kind of get your fingers around, but you will get used to it. It looks like this. So 
of those there. Again, all of these chords pretty much being four note chords, leaving out the fifth. So they're very playable and again, movable because all this stuff would just shift in whatever key you're in. Then we get to our sixth chord, which is just gonna be a B minor nine. And we already know this shape because we learned it in the other roadmap. Just like that. Another really cool sounding chord. And then last but not least, we get up to that seven chord. We're just gonna play the minor seven flat five shape. I've already shown you the shape with the F sharp down there, but the shape would look like this. Just like that. Before we return back to our D like that. Okay, so now at this point, you should be able to cover both chord roadmaps with all the different nine chords. And this is really cool, because like I said, you can just kind of like pick where you want to swap them in and out. Remember that these chords do have a specific sound to them. There's a little bit more tension there compared to just a regular major or minor seven chord or compared to just a regular major or minor chord or even compared to just a power chord. So I just say, depending on the genre of music you are playing, use them sparingly. But if you're playing jazz or if you are playing like neo soul and genres like that, you can definitely get away with using them a lot more. They're really fun to improvise over. So if you're into uh, looping chord progressions and using a looping pedal, one chord progression that I think is really cool to kind of try out is to go from the four chord to the one chord. So that would be in the key of G major, it'd be a C major nine to a G major nine, but doing both shapes on the A string. So going from here all the way up to here. Really, really fun to improvise over. Uh, it just kind of makes a more interesting backdrop when you are playing something over there like a G major scale, because that would fit very nicely. And you probably totally understand this by now, but because we related all of this to the chord roadmaps, it just makes everything just totally shiftable. So you pick which roadmap you want to use based on the key that you're playing in. And all that means is, okay, I'm playing in the key of A. Well, I can find an A note here on my low E string, and the easiest way to apply the chord roadmap is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's right there. And all of these chords would just shift to match up our chord roadmap in that position. Let's say I wanted to play in the key of C major. Well, instead of playing up here, finding this C note up here and building a roadmap up this high, maybe I'm playing acoustic, or I don't wanna play voicings that are so high up the fretboard, well, I can do the chord roadmap from down here. So I can find my one chord, which is the C here, and use that other roadmap. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then again, all of the shapes that we already learned are the same, just shifted for the key that you want to play it. This literally lets you play all the nine chords, all the seven chords, and all the major and minor chords literally in any key because you have access to all of these chords anywhere on the fretboard. It kind of gives you complete freedom to use all of these cool chords. And then on top of that, you're not really gonna get lost no matter where you are because you just relate everything back to those roadmaps. Now there's one last thing that I haven't talked about that you kind of might be wondering about and that is add nine chords. And that's because they operate a little bit differently than these other nine chords that we are talking about. Uh, where the major nine and the minor nine and just the regular nine and the minor seven flat nine chords require there to be a seven in the chord. So it's got the root, it's got the third, it's got the fifth, it's got the seven, and then it's got the nine, even though we are omitting the fifth with these shapes, technically it would have the fifth if we were building it out. Well, an add nine chord doesn't have the seven. So it's just a major or minor triad, including the nine. A really good example of this is a C add nine. It gets used all the time uh, because it's just a very comfortable chord to play. So if we take a C major chord, we just got roots, major thirds, and fifths. So we've got C notes, E notes, and G notes. And another C and another E. And then we're just adding the nine or the two, whatever note would be the two, which is a D. And we're just adding that into the chord and we're just gonna add it right up here. So we still have our root, our major third, our fifth, and now we have that nine. And then we have another E there, which would be another third, but it would sound like this. And that would be an example of an add nine chord. Some people play it like this as well. Both of those are add nine chords, but you can tell it doesn't quite have that same amount of tension, right? If this is a C add nine as a C major nine, 
right? They're very different sounding cores and they do operate kind of differently. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this video. If you do have any questions, please make sure you leave those in the comments below and I'll go down there and answer them. If you do wanna download the lesson notes, so with the chord charts and the cheat sheet that I was talking about earlier, those will be available over on Patreon or to my YouTube channel members. Uh, and if you're not a member of either of those yet, I do have links at the top of the description of this video. So you can go down there and check those out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please also consider subscribing to the channel here on YouTube. I release a new guitar video just like this one every single week. With all that said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.